Hello everyone, it's Wonder Woman here at Bat City Comic Professionals and I wanted to come today to read you some amazing stories about voting. We are partnered up with Shock the Vote ATX who's doing a wonderful job of reminding people of the importance of voting this election season but also of supporting your community and being a part of the family. Back where I'm from, wherever we are, we work together. We make everything come together as a team and that is something that you're doing every time you help your community and every time you get out and vote. So I want to read you some stories about why it's important to vote and share those things with you today. So first one is one vote, two votes, I vote, you vote. And this is by Bonnie Worth. And of course it's in the classic Dr. Seuss style, but See if you can see that. Yeah, let's put that over there. Voting is something we do every day. It's a way we can choose that gives us our own say. We vote for class president and which snacks to get, where to go on class trip, what to pick as class pet. I'm come towards you. That's the wrong way. Voting gives each of us our very own voice. It allows a large group to make one single choice. How do you vote? I'm gonna see if I can scoot this closer for a second so you guys can see this awesome pictures. There you go. Awesome. So how do you vote with a proudly raised hand? Marks on a paper, thumbs up or thumbs down, understand? Can you choose not to vote? Yes, but that's a sure way to lose your own voice and to not have a say. The item or person that most of us select will wind up the winner, the one we elect. The biggest of all of America's voting events chooses our president and vice president. Are presidents important? Oh yes, they are, very. They head up the government and the military. Vice presidents take over on the unhappy day when presidents get sick or else pass away. Every four years, we elect them, you see, because we live in a land of democracy, a government for the people and run by them too, which means that this country is governed by you. Every two years, we elect senators and Congress people of our choice to make laws in Washington and be our state's voice. We also elect sheriffs and mayors and such. Do local elections count? You bet, just as much. When our founders drew up the Constitution, it's true. They said folks should vote, but they did not say who. I don't know if I went to Cat in the Hat making all the decisions, but he's out there shaking hands. Since then, our history is marked by brave fights, waged by people who struggled to win voting rights. For all of the races, for all womankind, and also for 18-year-olds, bear in mind. That means that quite soon you will get to vote too. So please pay attention. This matters to you. And there's a voting rights timeline that shows when 18 year olds got the right to vote and when Americans, Native Americans got the right to vote and when women got the right to vote and when we've got the black men can vote. So I don't want to, I'm going the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> Only citizens can vote, and as you've just been told, people who are at least 18 years old. You must sign up in person or on the internet with name, address, and birth date. And one more thing yet, you can write down your party if you do not mind. Cakes and ice cream, you're thinking, is the party that kind? Ooh, that would be great if they brought cake and ice cream to the polls. This kind of party, I'm here to report, is the kind that we know as the political sort. Democratic Party, Republican Party, Libertarian, Green Party, Independent. It's made up of large group of citizens who share beliefs and ideas and opinions too. Democrats and Republicans are the biggest too, plus small parties to pick from, more than just a few. In primary elections run before November, votes will be cast by each party member for the candidate who they hope and they pray will be on the ballot come election day. You can see what the ballots look like for your different candidates. 
Candidates set out on the campaign trail to convince voters that they will not fail. A vote for me, the candidates say, will make your dreams come true someday. With speeches and ads and town hall meetings, with handshakes and waves and cherry greedy, cheery greetings, they work to win the voters' trust, to win nominations. This is a must. You can see all the political ads in there. Looks like thing one and thing two and all the who's down in Whoville might all be vote running for president. I may be wrong, but it does seem to me that voting is one big responsibility. As a voter, you must follow news carefully. You should read, watch, and listen, and then try to see. What the candidates have elected plan to do, what are their beliefs? Do they ring true for you? Can they turn the page for me? Okay. Debates are held for the people to see. The candidates talk on live TV. Moderators on hand have questions to ask. To give their best answer is the candidate's task. A debate is an argument that's meant to sway. It is run by rules in a most formal way. You can see all the candidates lined up for their first debate. Thing one and thing two running separately. At meetings called rallies, supporters get out to cheer their candidate they most care about. Supporters on the phone or going door to door say vote for my party on election day. They raise lots of money, collect change in jars, and sell campaign stickers to stick on their cars. You guys might see a lot of that right now. It's so close. George Washington won the vote, so I've been told, during a winter that was snowy and cold. In 1845, Congress passed a vote to say there would be an earlier election day. The day each year is easy to remember. It's the Tuesday after the first Monday in November. This date was chosen for a very good reason. It came at the end of the harvesting season. When election day comes, the voters big role is to make sure to vote at their assigned poll. A poll is where you vote as a general rule. It's a public place like a firehouse or school. If you're out of town, there's a chance that you might mail in an absentee ballot. Voting is your right. People cast their votes by different means. Ballots fed into computers or direct voting machines. However you vote, it's important you see that voters are given complete privacy. A curtain or screen protects voters from view. This ensures that your vote is known only to you. The polls close up at the end of the day. Here comes the counters. Please clear the way. By special computer, poll results are scanned, but some votes are still counted by hand. The results are sent to the Board of Election, which declares the winner after careful inspection. The loser admits their bitter defeat. The winner announces their victory sweet. The winner vows to serve everyone in the land, not just the supporters who lent them a hand. If all of this rings true, it is my dearest hope that you will cast your vo first vote for the cat in the hat. He knows a lot about everything. <laughs> So for that is one vote, two vote, I vote, you vote. And remember, we're talking about voting today because it is coming up on November the 3rd, which is the, sec the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November, as the cat explained to us in this book. So if you guys haven't already, tell your parents now's the time to vote. If you are a parent, get out and vote and see how you can support all of the nonprofits on Shock the Vote ATX. Um, we've got Duck for President now. This is by uh, Dar Dar Doreen Cronin. Oh, man. I am messing it all up over here. If you guys haven't read any of these books with Duck in them, oh my gosh, they're so good. Running a farm is very hard work. At the end of the day, Farmer Brown is covered from head to toe in hay, horsehair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. He doesn't smell very good either. The animals have chores to do too. Pigs clean under the beds. Cows weed the garden. Sheep sweep the barn. Duck take out the trash, mow the lawn, ground the coffee beans. At the end of each day, the pigs are covered in lint bunnies. The cows are covered in weeds. The sheep are covered in dust. 
and Duck is covered in tiny bits of grass and espresso beans. Poor Duck. Duck did not like to do chores. It did not like picking tiny bits of grass and espresso beans out of his feathers. Why is Farmer Brown in charge anyway, thought Duck. What we need is an election. He made a sign and hugged it in the barn. Farmer Brown must go. Farm election tomorrow. The next morning, Farmer Brown found a poster on his front door. Vote Duck for a gentler, kinder farm. Farmer Brown was furious. He ran to the barn and found the animals registering to vote. Voter registration. Voters must live on the farm, show valid ID, and he's scratching out that you have to be too tall. Farmer Brown does not look happy that people are voting. On election day, each of the animals filled out a ballot and placed it in a box. The vote was counted and the results were posted on the barn wall. Farmer Brown 6, Duck 20. Uh-oh. Looks like Duck might have won. Farmer Brown demanded a recount. One sticky ballot was found stuck to the bottom of a pig. The new tally was Farmer Brown 6, Duck 21. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge. See that little ballot stuck to pig's bottom? Running a farm is very hard work. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from head to toe in hay, horsehair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. Running a farm is no fun at all, thought Duck. That night, Duck and his staff started working on Duck's campaign for governor. Vote for me. I'm a duck, not a politician. Poor Duck, he does not look happy. Duck left Farmer Brown in charge and hit the campaign trail. He visited small town diners. He marched in parades. He went to town meetings. He gave speeches that only other ducks could understand. On election day, the voters filled out their ballots in booths all over the state. The vote was counted and the results were posted in the local paper. Duck wins by a nose. Oh my gosh. Now Duck's the governor. The governor demanded a recount. Two sticky ballots were found stuck to the bottom of a plate of pancakes. The new tally was Mrs. Governor, 299,999, Duck, 300,002. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge. Uh oh. Running a state is very hard. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from head to toe in hairspray, ink stains, scotch tape, fingerprints, mayonnaise, and coffee stains. And he had a very bad headache. Running a state is no fun at all, thought Duck. That night, Duck and his staff started working on posters for presidential election. A duck for change. I like duck. Duck making us proud again. Uh-oh. Now he's running for president. Duck left his staff in charge and hit the campaign trail. He kissed babies in local diners. He rode in parades. He gave speeches that only other ducks could understand. He even played the saxophone in late night television. We've had a president do that before. On election day, the voters filled out their ballots in booths all over the country. The vote was counted and the results were announced on CNN. The president demanded a recount. Ten sticky ballots were found stuck to the bottom of the vice president. The new tally was, Mr. President, 50,546,165. Duck, 50,546,180. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge. It looks like Duck doesn't have an electoral college. No, Johnny. The Cat and Hat did, though, so at least somebody was getting voted by the electoral college in there, too. Running a country is very hard work. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from head to toe in face powder, paper cuts, staples, security badges, secret service agents, and coffee stains. And he had a very bad headache. Running a country is no fun at all, thought Duck. Oh, he looks so upset in his office. Then he checked the help wanted ads. Duck needed. No experience necessary. Must be able to mow the lawn and grind the coffee beans. Duck left the vice president in charge and headed back to the farm. 
At the end of each day, Farmer Brown is now covered from head to toe in hay, horsehair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. And Duck is working on his autobiography. Cute. So, Duck got, so we've got Cat in the Hat running for president. He taught us all about the history of voting and all about the way the government works with how votes go. And then Duck just completely did his own thing. So let's see what happens when Grace runs for president. I am very excited about this one. Look at that. She looks like she's going to do a great job. This is by Kelly DiPuccio. I am very excited to see where this one goes. One Monday morning in September, Mrs. Barrington rolled out a big poster with all of the president's pictures on it. Grace Campbell be could not believe her eyes. Where are the girls? Uh-oh. If you look at all those pictures of presidents, it doesn't look like there's any girl presidents in there. Grace doesn't seem happy about that. That is a very good question, said Miss Barrington. The truth is, our country has never had a woman president, which is crazy. Where I'm from, all of the presidents are women. Everybody in charge is a woman. No girl president ever, Grace asked. No, I'm afraid not, said Miss Barrington. Grace sat at her desk and stewed. No girls. Who'd ever heard of such a crazy thing? Finally, she raised her hand. Uh-oh. I'm very excited to see Grace raise her hand and do something. Yes, Grace, I've been thinking it over, and I'd like to be president. Several students in the class laughed. Well, I think that's a star-spangled idea, Grace, said Miss Barrington. In fact, we can have our own election right here at Woodrow Wilson Elementary. The snickering in the room stopped. Grace smiled. Would anyone else like to run for president, Miss Barrington asked the class. Nobody raised their hand. Becoming president was going to be easy, Grace thought. The next day, Mrs. Barrington made an announcement. In the name of democracy, I have invited Mr. Waller's class to join our election. The class has nominated Thomas Cobb to be their presidential candidate. Grace's heart sank. Thomas was the school spelling bee champion. His experiments always took a blue ribbon at the science fair, and he was captain of the soccer team. Becoming president wasn't going to be so easy after all, Grace thought. Uh-oh, this Thomas Cobb guy looks like he's got a lot going on. This teacher, the teacher put their names of all 50 states and the District of Columbia into a hat. Everyone except for Grace and Thomas got to choose a state. I'm Texas, said Anthony. I'm New Hampshire, said Rose. I'm Michigan, said Robbie. What does the number 17 mean? Each state is assigned a number of electoral votes. The number is determined by how many people live in that state, said Mrs. Barrington. Each of you will be a representative for your state. Altogether, our country has 538 electoral votes, Mr. Waller explained. On election day, the candidate receive, who receives 270 electoral votes or more wins the election. Why 270? asked Rose. That's more than half of all the electoral votes, Mrs. Waller said. Becoming president really wasn't going to be so easy, Grace thought. There you go, Johnny. There's a story that has the electoral college in it and an explanation. So if you guys don't know what they do... Grace came up with a campaign slogan, Make History, Vote Grace Campbell for President. Thomas came up with his own campaign slogan, Vote for Thomas Cobb, the best man for the job. Grace listened to what issues were important to the students, and she made a list of campaign promises. A peaceful school, no bullies. A cleaner school, no littering. Bit better hot lunches, no more fish stick tacos. Thomas made up his own list of promises. Free tutoring, free soccer lesson, lessons, fish stick tacos every week. Grace made campaign posters and buttons. Thomas made posters and buttons, too. Each week, the teachers set aside time for the candidates to meet with their constituents. Vote for Grace. Grace for president. Make history. Vote for Grace. Polls were taken. Votes were make, Voters were making their choices. 
Grace continued to campaign. Vote for Grace! At recess, she gave speeches. During lunch, she handed out free cupcakes. That is a great way to get my vote. Grace for the girl for the job. Vote Grace. Grace, Grace, Grace. After school, she held rallies. Meanwhile, Thomas wasn't worried. He had very care carefully, ca cleverly calculated that the boys held slightly more electoral votes than the girls. Uh-oh, this doesn't seem fair. At recess, Thomas studied his spelling words. During lunch, he worked on his latest science experiment. After school, he played soccer. Even before the election, Grace made good on her promises. She joined the safety squad. She organized the school beautification committee. And she volunteered her time in the school cafeteria. Grace looks tired, but it looks like she's getting a lot done for the school. Even before she's president, seems like she'd make a great president. In early November, Woodrow Wilson Elementary hosted a special election day assembly. Grace and Thomas took third places on stage as the school band began to play. Henry was the first representative to approach the microphone. The Yellowhammer State of Alabama cast its nine electoral votes for Thomas Cobb. Fletcher said, the last frontier state of Alaska cast its three electoral votes for the best man for the job, Thomas Cobb. Hannah called out, the Grand Canyon state of Arizona cast its 10 electoral votes for Grace Campbell. And so it went. State after state after state cast their electoral votes. The scoreboard in the gymnasium kept track of the totals. Since we had questions about it earlier, this book is doing such a great job of showing the Electoral College voting. The voting demonstration was quickly coming to an end. Clara approached the podium. The Badger State of Wisconsin cast its 10 votes for my best friend, Grace Campbell. Grace looked at the scoreboard. Thomas had 268 electoral votes. She had 267. There was only one state still accounted for, Wyoming. Uh-oh. Thomas grinned. Grace felt sick. Sam walked up to the microphone. He looked at Thomas. He looked at Grace. He looked down at Grace's handmade flag. She Sam didn't say a word. What are you waiting for? Thomas whispered. The band stopped playing. All eyes were on Wyoming. Finally, Sam cleared his throat. <clears> throat> The Equality State of Wyoming cast its three electoral votes for Grace Campbell. The gymnasium erupted in loud cheers and a few boos. Miss Barrington approached the podium with 270 electoral votes. The winner is Grace Campbell. Thomas looks stunned. Grace hugs Sam. Why did you do it? She asked. Sam handed Grace his flag because, he said, I thought you were the best person for the job. The following week, the students in Miss Barrington's class were preparing for their career day presentations. Grace volunteered to go first. She stood at the front of the room and glanced at the poster, still hanging on the wall. My name is Grace Campbell, and when I grow up, I'm going to be president of the United States. This time, everybody believed that she would. Oh, man, there she is, Grace, being sworn in as president. Congratulations, Grace. That's awesome. There's actually an author note in here that talks about the Electoral College. So for those of you guys who were asking questions about it earlier in its feature in here, um, there's a really good note from the author when talking about everything that the Electoral College does. And so I'm gonna read you that. You might be wondering what the Electoral College is and how it works. You're not alone. Many adults have a hard time understanding the process. First of all, the Electoral College has nothing to do with going to college. It's our country system for electing a president. When people vote in presidential elections, what they're really doing is telling the representatives from their state who they'd like to become president of the United States. These elected representatives, known as the electors, then cast their electoral votes for the candidate who received the most popular votes in his or her state. Currently, there are 538 electors in the United States. 
Each state is assigned a number of electoral votes equal to the number of senators and representatives it has. Every state has two senators, but the number of representatives each state has depends on its population. So the more people a state has, the more electoral votes it has. California, for example, has a large population. It has two senators, just like the other states, and 53 members of the House of Representatives, unlike the other states. Likewise, states that are less populated will have fewer representatives and fewer electoral votes. In an election, the presidential candidate to win the majority of electoral votes, 270, is the winner. Why does our country use such a complicated system? The Electoral College was written into our Constitution all the way back in 1787. Americans didn't have television, radios, or computers back then. It was very difficult for average citizens to be accurately informed about all the candidates running for president. The Electoral College system gave elected officials a much bigger role in choosing the President of the United States. Even though most Americans do have access to more information today, a constitutional amendment would have to be passed in order to change the current system. Hundreds of suggestions for changing the election process have been offered over the years, but so far, not one of them has been approved by Congress. You might be wondering why regular people should even bother to vote in elections if the electoral vote from state representatives is what determines which man or woman gets to be president. I'll tell you why. It's those individual votes for regular people that add up to become the popular vote in each state. Electors cast all of their electoral votes for the candidates their constituents have given the majority of votes to. So every single vote is important. Thank you, Grace and Kelly, for teaching us all about the Electoral College and for seeing a woman president. I can't wait. I think if Grace was sworn in as president, she would do a great job. She would run things exactly like the women do in Themyscira, and I think she would do a great job. So thank you, Kelly, for showing us what a woman for president looks like. And that is story time for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me as we talked about all of the great books about voting. It was so wonderful to get to tell everybody how the system works and kind of look at it in fun and exciting and educational ways. We're very excited to be partnered with Shock the Vote ATX to see all of the work they're doing to bring our community together to inform our community about the options they have for voting locally, statewide, and nationally. So you guys check them out if you need to find some more information about what's on your ballot. I'm sure they can direct you to that information. And of course, they are raising money currently for six local ATX organizations that are nonprofits. Um, there are some amazing ones. I know that they work with out, they're working with out youth and b between the pages and some of the wonderful ones. Uh, Lucas, if you want to drop all of the organizations people can support into the comments, that would be really great. Uh, the duck book was called duck for president and it was by Doreen Cronin, um, with art by Betsy Lulin. Um, and so, and it was, she was, who was actually a Caldecott nominee. So, um, it was one vote, two votes, I vote, you vote, Duck for president, and Grace for president. So thank you everyone for joining. Please remember that even if you are not old enough to get out and vote, you can still make a difference in your community by doing your part to help people. It doesn't matter, big or small. We can all be superheroes. We can all make a difference. You have the opportunity to do that every day by doing something kind for your neighbor. Um, pick up trash on the side of the the high the street if you see it, not the highway. Please, like unless you have an adult with you and it's safe. Um, pick up trash on the side of the street. Go clean up a neighborhood park. Make sure you're being safe. Wear your mask. Keep people safe around you. Um, and always be a good friend to somebody because that's the most important thing we can do. We're all members of the same Justice League and we are here to protect the world and do great and wonderful things for it. So get out there. Do your part. If you're an adult and you haven't yet, go vote. You have time to do some early voting or you can wait and go on election day, though we all know the lines will be really long that day. Um, get out vote, do your part, be informed, support the organizations through Shock the Vote ATX and our wonderful city of Austin. And thank you so much to Bat City Comics for having me. Um, and they as well are a nonprofit organization. So if you guys haven't supported them, all of the money that comes into the store goes to help continue to provide literacy programs and resources for teachers as well as scholarships to those pursuing degrees in the arts. So support Bat City Comics check out Shock the Vote ATX and we'll see you guys at the polls. Thank you.